Hello everybody and welcome to part 2 of detailing and building the Ravel Monogram 140H scale B17G. In part 2, I'm going to show you how to modify the kit parts to accept resin 2 details R1820 radial engines for this kit. And lastly, I'm going to show you how I paint these 3D printed engines. I've gotten several comments from part 1 on people wanting more information on my gluing technique using super glue. If you go to my playlist and scroll down a little bit, you'll find a title, Aircraft Tutorials for Scale Modeling, where I have two videos that are specific to my super glue gluing technique, and another video that's specific to painting these 3D printed engines. Before we get started, I thought it'd be interesting to show you some close-ups of our 1820 engines mounted on a B-17 at an interior air museum. So let's start there and then towards the end I've got some more pictures of 1820 engines from an outdoor air museum. The engines on this B-17 are in absolute pristine condition. Here you can clearly see the variance in colors of the cylinders, the push rods which are sometimes gloss black or steel or chrome, the metal brass covered wiring harness, and the color of the crankcase. And now on to the model. I've got some preliminary engine work completed and I wanted to show you this, how I did all this. This is a resin 2 detail engine and uh, it's all we need to do is paint it. It's all wired up correctly and uh, the challenge here is painting it which I demonstrated how to do that in an earlier YouTube video on the uh, R2600s for my uh, Ravel Monogram B25J. But uh, these are going to look really nice. They're much more detailed than the uh, Monogram stock kit parts, which are really one piece. So <clears throat> just to uh, work backwards here. Uh, I sanded this backing down a little bit. There was a, a flat tab up here, which uh, this part, this, this resin 2 detail part, I haven't done anything to it, was a spare. I had to remove that piece in order to get the cowling to fit correctly. And you can see the difference in the, hold on, you can see the difference in the backing. I went ahead and sanded it down and I'll show you how I set up to do the sanding. I always wet sand resin because the uh, the dust is a is a lung irritant so you always want to wet sand these things so uh, with that uh, the other thing I did was after I wet sanded it down I put a 0 0.010 inch disc on the back of this and super glued it I just super glued it onto a, a piece of plastic and then just cut it out and then here uh, I went ahead and did some cutouts of 0 0.015 and glued it into place right here and then put a backing on it a 0.020 to make it stronger so it wouldn't flex this way so now um, normally when you're gluing resin to plastic or resin to resin you have to use super glue because regular testers glue won't work however I want to be able to make adjustments to this so the only way to do that is if you have two plastic backings so now I can put some drops of uh, testers regular plastic glue here and attach this and then I can position it correctly on uh, the backing here so that I get a perfect fit and then uh, I can put the cover on it the other thing I did was the um, the propeller shafts are way too thin and or the diameters way too small for the monogram kit so what I did was as you're sanding this down, they uh, break off, and so what I do is I'll center punch it and drill it out slowly and incrementally up to 0 .080, and then a little bit more so that I can put a 0 .0, 0 .080 rod in here, and now it fits perfectly. What you have to do with the propellers is Evergreen makes 3 inch tubing which fits perfectly inside of the uh, holes here on these propellers and you cut it flush and then you carefully drill it out 
to about 0 0.083 and uh, you can see how thin thin wall that is but it's super glued in place so it's not a problem so now the entire assembly will go like this and it'll look pretty good so um, and uh, the nice thing here is you've got this three-dimensional wiring that uh, for the uh, magnetos the oil pump and uh, the spark plugs and uh, each cylinder gets two spark plugs one in the front and one on the top or one in the back and uh, so this came out pretty good now how did I do this well let me move the propellers out of the way and the resin 2 details out of the way resin 2 detail engines the, uh, the first thing I did was I cut off the front half of the engine with this razor saw and then what I did was on a level block I put very rough grade sandpaper here and wet sanded this down very slowly and carefully rotating it so it sanded it down even and I did that on this one and on this one and uh, you, the plastic will get so thin that it'll just pop right out so this actually was like right here and then it popped right out so this one uh, is almost done you can see that the plastic is now paper thin and almost transparent just a little bit more and it'll pop right out now what you need to do for the engine to fit correctly is you have to sand this down so that these thicker tabs are at approximately two sixteenths of an inch I'm sorry two thirty seconds of an inch well let me do it yep two th it's uh, two thirty seconds of an inch sorry about that <clears throat> now it, in order to sand this down correctly you have to use very very fine grit sandpaper because the first time I did it I was in a rush and you can see what happened here it just uh, didn't work I used this very rough sandpaper and it cut it down way too fast so you have to go slow and uh, you use very very fine grit sandpaper about 400 works really really well and then uh, these two pieces are now ready for the attachment of their discs and how I did that was uh, I just measured the disc cut it out and then put tiny drops of, of uh, testers tube glue here set the disc in place positioned it and then after it dried I came back behind it and uh, hit it with super glue um, all along this interior area and then uh, did a 15 16 15 16th inch disc and uh, super glued it to the backing and now it's pretty strong so uh, it's real important uh, I, I always like to uh, reinforce my construction as much as possible to make things strong so that uh, in case something drops or I push too hard it won't break on me which is one of the reasons why I like reinforcing the wings so that they don't flex so that's what I've done so far and uh, I've got to do three more engines and then uh, I'll be ready to get back to the wings and work on them but I really like the way this is going to look when it's done looks pretty good and it's uh, really going to provide a a level of detail now see how it can move around inside here which is good because that gives me a little bit of working room and with the front and the back uh, plastic I can use testers tube glue to hold it in place and position it and then once it's dry I can hit it with some uh, super glue along the edges here and you're not going to see any of that once uh, once the cowling's on so the other thing I looked at was I thought maybe I could thin out the cowling flaps and put them out just a little bit but really can't do it there's there's nothing 
to this to attach to in order to pull, push it out you'll just destroy the uh, the appearance of the part so <clears throat> we'll, um, I need to go ahead and finish this one and then uh, I need to glue the backings and drill out the uh, proper shaft propeller shaft hole diameters for these other three pieces and uh, the engines will be pretty much done for the prep work before I start painting. All the preliminary work is now complete on the engines. They've all got a nice backing on them and the base of the engines where we're going to glue them up is also set and uh, I checked the cowlings and there was a little bit of flash here and on the back side cleaned it up and used some silver paint here to check where the tree attachment points were and they look pretty good so uh, and I made a, a spare propeller just in case I break one but uh, they're looking good I'm probably gonna have to clean this off after I paint it because the tolerance is really really tight but that's okay it's gonna look pretty good so uh, again they will look like this when they're done and uh, it's looking pretty good and I like the little bit of wiggle room here that allows me some adjustment and it's <clears throat> as I stated earlier it's really important to put these plastic backings on here so that you can use testers tube glue to go ahead and position it and it give you about 15 seconds of working time before that glue starts to harden up so uh, came out pretty good the one other thing I wanted to mention to you is that I had mentioned uh, I had mentioned that you center point or center punch <clears throat> and then drill out for the 0 .080 new prop shaft. The problem with resin is that the drill bits tend to walk around because the resin is very very soft. It's not like plastic, so you need to be very careful when you drill these. And if it starts to off center, what you do is you take the tip of a number 11 blade and carve out the area that is off centered and then use a larger blade that'll fill in that hole and that helps walk it back so uh, but it's also important to use incremental drill bits if you use too large of a drill bit you're going to ruin this part so uh, I also recommend you get one or two spares just in case you do ruin it so uh, that concludes the preliminary work on the uh, engines and the cowlings and the backings and uh, we're ready to move on to complete the wings. These are the engine parts that go on the outside of the engine nacelles on the port and starboard side and uh, I didn't notice this until after I airbrushed them but there's dimples here and I have two sets and they came from two different kits some of the dimples on some of the kits are, are pretty profound and, and others are just really, really shallow. So uh, I found two of them that were shallow and I just sanded them out. And so um, you can see all, all I need to do is now reshoot these. And uh, I used Tester's Metalizer Buffing Burnt Iron. They have burnt iron and burnt metal. The burnt metal is more on the silver side. The burnt iron is more on this color. And um, once you, with buffing, you can literally buff it up a little bit. I've got to reshoot this, so, it'll, and then I'll redo this. But you can see how it really enhances the appearance. And then <clears throat> once I'm done buffing what I want to buff out, I'll tone it down with some testers dull coat and uh, it'll be set to go. And I'll use the same color on the uh, air injectors uh, that are on the bottoms of the engine cowlings. And I'll do the same thing. I'll go ahead and buff it out and then shoot it with some uh, testers dull coat. So, um, but just be mindful of that. 
that um, that one doesn't look too bad. You can almost get away with that, but that dimple is pretty profound, and you got to do something with it. The way you fix something that bad, it put just put a drop of uh, super glue in there, let it dry, and then you can sand it out, and that should fix the problem. On these, they were both the uh, the dimples were pretty shallow, so I was able to just sand them out. So now I just got to reshoot them with some of the testers metalizer and uh, we're ready to, they're ready to go. The engines are now complete and uh, they came out pretty good. I really like these 3D printed engines because everything is here and all you have to do is paint it. And the trick to painting these is you start from the bottom and kind of work your way up and in. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. I do have a video <clears throat> on painting the uh, 3D printed R2600s that I did for my 148 scale B25J. But uh, these came out pretty good. Now, <clears throat> to tone it down, all you have to do is hit it with some clear flat. And you can see the difference. So, how did I do this? These are the three brushes that I used. I used this thicker brush for the zinc chromate green background. And then I used these two tiny detail brushes for the cylinder heads, the push rods, the tops of the push rods, and then for the uh, wiring harness. First color after priming is I used a gloss gray so that it would make it easy for these tiny decals. These are the decals that actually came with the monogram kit. And uh, I've had this kit for a long, long time and the decals are still good. And one of the secrets to preserving decals is you put them in a Ziploc bag, get as much of the air out of it as you can and then seal it, which is what I do with all my decals. So the gloss gray was first. Then working from the bottom towards uh, uh, from the bottom up and into the center, the uh, zinc chromate green, and then the lower cylinder heads were done with Model Master non buffing steel. And uh, I used this brush for it. The tops of the cylinders got a gun metal. And then the push rods, chrome silver, the tops of the push rods, the rocker arms, got a flat black. And I always put a few drops of thinner in these quarter bottles of tester paint. It makes the paint flow a lot easier. And then for the wiring harness, <clears throat> um, I've seen a lot of B-17s in museums and both inside museums, outside museums, and actually flying B-17s. And all of them, all of them have brass there's these uh the, the wiring harnesses are covered with this brass tubing and so um i really like this all clad two copper color and um you have to shake it up a lot you shake it up and you can probably get about you know maybe a half an inch before you have to close the cap and reshake it up again because this stuff is really really thin and it's, it's a lacquer base, but uh, it works really, really well. And I really like this color. So um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll go ahead and shoot the other three with some clear coat, flat clear coat. And then uh, I'll be able to move on to the propellers and um, we'll be in good shape. So uh, I really like the way, the way they came out. My, my only disappointment here is that the, the cooling vanes on these cylinders, I wish there was a little more relief to them because typically when you use gloss gray and then you use either the metalizer, non-buffing or buffing, this is really, really thin. And it typically seeps down inside between the cooling vanes of the cylinders and leaves kind of a two-tone effect. The top half of the cooling veins is usually this gloss gray, and then inside is the uh, the the, uh, the color, the either steel or the uh, uh, gunmetal color. But uh, there there isn't much relief on these uh, cooling veins, so that didn't work very well. But once it's closed up, you're just going to see the face of this. 
So, um, yeah, the decals work good, and uh, we are ready. So, uh, after I, when I, once I start uh, weathering, I'll show you what that looks like. And I'm just going to do a very, very mild weathering on this aircraft, including the engines. These engines are from a B-17G at the Outdoor Air Museum at Eglin Air Force Base in the Panhandle of Florida. The colors I chose for my 3D printed engines closely resemble what these engines actually look like, both in pristine condition and those that have been sitting out in the weather for a long time. This concludes part two of detailing and building the Ravel Monogram 148 scale B17G. In part three, we're going to detail the landing gear and the wheel hubs. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music and happy scale modeling.